Welcome back to another Space News Update. This past week saw India shoot for the moon again. We celebrate one year of incredible images from the James Webb Space Telescope. And China beats SpaceX to put a Methalox rocket in orbit. So stick around and let's get going. Alright everyone, we start this international space news update with India's Chandrayaan-3 mission. Launching from the Satish Dhawan Space Centre on the 14th of July at 2.35pm local time, Chandrayaan-3 lifted off aboard the Indian Space Research Organization's LVM-3 rocket. Previously known as the GSLV, this was the fourth operational mission for this rocket that bears a striking resemblance to the Ariane 5 and it carried the 3.9 ton payload to Earth orbit, with the craft separating from the rocket just 16 minutes after takeoff. Coming in at a cost of just $73 million, this launch comes nearly four years after India's last moonshot with Chandrayaan-2, which ended in heartbreaking fashion when the lander crashed into the lunar surface after suffering a software issue. However, that hasn't deterred them, and the ISRO are back again for another attempt. For a modest price tag, ISRO have a great looking system, with the upper stage propulsion module powering a lander and rover combination to around a 100 km lunar orbit. It will take several smaller burns to gradually increase the spacecraft's Earth orbit before it can begin translunar injection and orbital insertion is expected to occur around the 23rd or 24th of August. The Vikram lander, together with the Pragyan rover, will then detach and descend to a planned landing site near the South Pole, something no agency has achieved to date. Vikram has four 800 Newton liquid engines, attitude control thrusters and new beefed up landing legs to help it achieve a soft landing. Interestingly, this site is near Russia's planned lunar landing site for Luna 25, which is due to launch in August. Hopefully Russia leaves Vikram and Pragyan alone and doesn't try to carry out any more special operations. New algorithms have been built into the landing software this time around and all going well, the mission is designed to last one lunar day or 14 Earth days, with the main objectives being to demonstrate a soft, uncrewed landing on the lunar surface, a successful rover operation, and in-situ science experiments. Vikram and Pragyan are packed with scientific equipment, including a seismometer called ILSA, a thermophysical experiment to measure thermal properties of the surface, a mineralogical spectroscope, and a particle X-ray spectrometer. The payload module also houses a probe to search for exoplanets in reflected light, so all in, this is a really interesting mission and hopes are high for full success this time round. Now, before we move on, the algorithm hasn't been so kind lately to smaller creators like myself, with my videos reaching far fewer people than they previously have. So don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future Space News content. Each and every like goes a long way to helping this channel out, and you can also support me on Patreon by following the link below. Now. This past week heralded the one year anniversary of the James Webb Space Telescope being operational and boy what a year it's been. With James Webb Space Telescope capturing stunning images of our universe from further back in time than ever before, detecting organic molecules billions of light years away and capturing beautifully detailed shots of nebulae. But to mark the one year anniversary, NASA have released this stunning image showing a star birth like never before. Just look at it, it really does look like a painting, full of colour and texture, it's simply breathtaking. The image shows the Rho Ophiuchi cloud complex, the closest star forming stellar nursery closest to Earth, as it breathes life to around 50 young stars, seen from a distance of around 390 light years. Those red arm like clouds are actually molecular hydrogen and occur when a star first appears through its cocoon of cosmic dust. That bright star in the centre of the image is called S1 
and is the only star in the image that's significantly bigger than our own sun. Not only that though, James Webb has apparently now found evidence that early galaxies were responsible for the reionization of the early universe. This series of near-infrared images were taken from a portion of the universe when it was only 900 million years old. A team from the Iger collaboration of international scientists used JWST and these images to look at light from an ancient quasar, studying as the light passed through ancient galaxies over billions of years before reaching Earth. They found a correlation between the locations of these galaxies and patches of reionized gas, allowing them to conclude that the galaxies themselves were responsible for the reionization of the surrounding space, possibly due to the formation of new stars. Prior to this, hydrogen filled the gaps between early galaxies before being ionized and forming areas of plasma that were less efficient at absorbing light compared to the previous hydrogen areas. It's just another great example of how the James Webb Space Telescope is transforming our understanding of the universe, and I cannot wait to see what images JWST has yet to bring. Now, I don't normally cover Chinese rocket launches, but this one has just written itself into the history books. This past week, the Zhukyu 2, developed by Beijing-based private company Landspace, lifted off from the Zhiquan Satellite Launch Center in the Gobi Desert, under the power of liquid methane, producing those stunning blue flames that are synonymous with methane burning. Chinese state media confirmed that the fully expendable 49.5 meter long rocket had reached orbit a short time after liftoff, and this was independently verified by US Space Force tracking data which showed it to be in a 431 by 461 kilometer sun synchronous orbit. ZQ-2 thus beat out every other methane-fueled rocket in the world, including SpaceX's Starship, ULA's Vulcan, Blue Origin's New Glenn, and a whole bunch of others. Landspace have already begun assembling another ZQ-2 for a possible further launch attempt later this year, and gives them hope of mass producing the design to carry 6,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit. Whilst Chinese launches are still mostly shrouded in secrecy, what this shows is that Methalox rockets do work, and this may just give the bigger players a shot of confidence when it comes to finalizing and testing their designs. Tori Bruno is still hopeful that ULA's new Vulcan Centaur will launch in Q4 of this year, after modifications have been made to the Centaur upper stage, which suffered a hydrogen leak whilst on a test stand back in March. And finally, coming all the way home, we have good news from Orbex. Orbex announced that they are expanding their facilities in both Denmark and Scotland by another 1,500 square metres, allowing for more office and factory space as they ramp up development and construction of their Orbex Prime rocket. The additional space in Scotland will add further production suites, a software laboratory, and an avionics clean room. This is on top of construction work beginning at Spaceport Sutherland, which they are funding for a home soil launch facility. Of course, if you want to keep up to date with all of the progress at Spaceport Sutherland, don't forget to check back here for future news updates, and check out Space Nessie's channel for his regular trips up to the site. Being part of the Team Space Media Group means I get to share all of the amazing content from an incredible group of creators with you all. Our whole team brings you space flight and educational content each and every single week, so by sticking with us, you will never miss a thing. Don't forget to hit that like button. I've been Tom June. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.